Hey, what is up guys? Bungans here today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do sample chops on a sample. So we're talking about you take one audio file and then you chop it into a whole bunch of smaller pieces and then you play each of those little pieces on a different key on your keyboard. And then you can get a lot of unique chops in hip hop because a lot of hip hop is actually based around loops and flipping loops. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that today. Let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, you have to download one particular sampler. Um, there are quite a few samplers that are, are around there, and I especially like Complete Control, but Complete Control actually doesn't have this feature built into it. So I need you to download the sampler called TX16WX Sampler. There's a link in the description. And when you open up, it's gonna look like this. It looks kind of complicated, especially when you go into some of these other um, windows here. It gets very, very complicated, but I'm gonna take you through every single step so you totally know what you're doing. So what I want you to do is I want you to click Waves here, and that's gonna open up where you wanna have the slicer. And I want you to find a sampler you wanna use, like this one on my desktop, and I want you to drag it into this empty area up here and now just like that you have that entire sample laid out inside of the plugin and now if your sample is mostly on the grid and stuff like that what you can actually do is you can just go onto this little slice thing turn this number up to like 16 for for example and then hit this little enter key here and then it's going to slice your sample into 16 even parts i'm actually not going to use 16 equal parts because as you can see there are a lot of things over here So maybe if the slices are too small, you can actually turn this number up to like 32, for example. That's exactly double of 16. And then your slices will be a lot smaller, but that will only work if your sample originally is set to four or eight bars or 16 bars, if it's a very um, normal number. So I turn this number up to 32, but I want to be a little bit more specific with my samples. So I want to make sure that each key has a different individual note. Like for example, like right here, like that's a single note, but I also want it to kind of extend longer and I want it to start a little bit later. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Basically the key is, let's hit a little plus sign over here so that we can kind of zoom in a bit. Play that one note and I want you to just fine tune exactly how it's gonna happen. You can extend and shrink these little things and you can move them around even. Just try your best throughout the entire sample to get your sounds into a way that you think would be useful to flip. And once you have sliced it all up into the ways you want it, right click on this area and then go to slice, layout slices. And then nothing changed on your screen, but if you actually hit this little regions button here, you can actually see that on top of all of these little keys, just like your keyboard, it lays out all the little audio files you have. Like that. And then you can chop everything up just like that. Here's one last thing to make your samples a little sound a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna select all of my samples here. I'm gonna click waves on this top section to minimize that little dialog box. And then we're gonna hit sounds here to open up the sounds category and then hit this little plus sign. And then these are the attack decay sustain release of all of our sounds. So for, here, for example, if we play the C here, it plays that chord there. But if we turn this little attack up, you can see that it kind of like, so now we don't want it to be that extreme. And just like that, I think we're ready to start ch chopping things up. So now we gotta clean this up a little bit. Let's first hit Q on our keyboard and quantize everything to 1 16th. And then I'm also gonna extend these exactly their length so that they're like all touching each other in like their end length. Now what I did was I made sure the tempo was synced so that it all sounded like it was all on the grid. Especially this one right here, this da dum. It's two notes on one key, so you gotta make sure the tempo is synced correctly. So I think I wanna use this for the drop, so I'm gonna hit freeze here. And then turn on the entire thing to audio. And then let's control drag this clip down here to this empty area. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna make an audio track with that file on it. Then you can unfreeze the original MIDI. Now we have the audio down here and we have the original MIDI down here. So mute the MIDI. I'm not gonna be able to resist. I gotta make a lo-fi beat. <laughs>
I can't tell if I love the snare pattern or if I hate the snare pattern because it's like on the th it's not on the three anymore. It's on the one, two and the four. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the secret hi hat. It's a not very it's not a very lo fi kind of hi hat. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this hi hat like this. It's gonna be pretty slow. Basically, all I'm doing is I'm gonna be keeping metronome with this one. Why don't we just go in here and change some of these velocities too? That is so chill. <laughs> really fire listen to this Woo! Andrew Paul would be so proud of me This might sound really, really trash, but I'm gonna try to whistle on this song. So I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna drag on an M compressor and I'm gonna look through these presets for the gate preset, noise gate here. And basically that's entirely because I was whistling pretty quietly into the microphone. So I had to bring up the gain by 10 dB. So all of the really, really quiet stuff in the background actually gets brought up too. Now I'm gonna add another compressor on top of that. Just doing normal compressor stuff. So now all we have left is the actual whistle. Now I'm going to use this Nectar Elements plugin. And now the string treats your flute like a vocal. Okay, so this is really really chill but i think i want to add just a couple more like ear candy kind of sounds like because imagine this is like the drop you're not going to want to play the same drop over and over and i know that lo-fi is pretty chill and that kind of thing but i just want to have a couple more variation like tambourine kind of sound just like something weird we go what if we bring this thing in I'm gonna try this really cool thing. I'm gonna export this entire song as lo-fi video. I don't know. And mix down the entire audio and then I'm gonna do some really cool effects to it and you're gonna like this. Like just stay, this is gonna blow your mind. <laughs> what I'm actually gonna do this is I'm gonna hit control shift and I'm gonna slow down the entire song. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow it down like a lot, like a lot slower. And then I'm gonna just right click on it and do bounce to clips. And now that I have the audio fire slowed down, I'm actually going to speed it up to maybe even a little faster than the original tempo. Now it, sound, now it sounds just a little bit lower quality. Now I'm also going to grab on a um, isotope vinyl. I 
has been several, several months since I made a beat like this. And thank you all so much for watching. Um, I really enjoyed making this beat. Um, so, so... See you guys next week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Live streams on Saturday. See you guys later. Just keep creating. Woo!